Found in all the most grotty places of almost every city, I made this fly posting board to go under the arch on Bridge Lane in Chandwell. This poster is sitting in a frame less than a third of a millimetre wide, which I cut by hand, so I thought I'd put this very quick video together to show how I made these hoardings. At this small scale, it's really important to use a thin but sturdy card, and Weetabix packet is absolutely perfect for this. So I printed the frames, just simple rectangles, and then pasted them using a glue stick onto some Weetabix packet. The glue sticks I buy in bulk from eBay, and they work out really cheap. It's important to let the glue dry, I suggest at least an hour, because when you're doing the next part, you don't want the paper to tear. So using a really sharp blade in my scalpel, I very gently cut out the inner part of the frames, leaving a little window for the posters to shine through. Once this is done, we want to remove the visible card edge, so I use white paint and a small brush and just very gently paint it around the inside of the frame, taking care not to get any on the fronts, because I've got the front the right colour already. Once this is done and the paint is dry, I put glue around the outer edge of the frames of the posters. I put the glue on quite liberally because we want to be able to slide the posters into position. We need to get them shining through the holes that we've just cut. We need to include a wide border to give the glue something to grip onto as it's drying. I'll leave this to dry for an hour under a weight just to make sure that they're flat. And then it's time to cut out the rest of the frame. With the ruler over the top of the poster itself so that we don't push the tiny frame out, we then use a very, very sharp blade in the scalpel again and using loads of incredibly light strokes, just gently cut the border out. This border is only 0.3 millimeters wide, so it takes extreme care to make sure that we don't bend it or rip it. I use a bit of card in place so that my pushing of the blade doesn't pull out the frame. Take my time with this and what we end up with are the three boards fully cut out with their tiny serial packet frames. I use white paint around the outer borders just to fill it in to make it look like one solid piece of wood. As with all my models I varnish them. Um, I use AK Interactive Matte Varnish, I put two coats of that on. Then I put two coats of AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish just to really take the shine down. It's a little bit tricky getting them into place under the arch because the arch is glued down and Iron Bridge Works is also glued down and that's in the way a little bit. So with plenty of glue on the back, this normal PVA, I slide them into position using my tweezers. Because the glue is still wet, it gives you a few seconds to get them into exactly the right position. So I prod them and poke them and slide them around until they're exactly where I want. I use a ruler to push them against the wall of the arch and eventually they're where I want them and the glue hardens. So what about the posters themselves? Let's take a look at how I made these. I made them in Inkscape, of course. A1 paper seemed about the right size for these posters. At end scale, that's 4mm wide by 5.6mm tall. I added simple text and shapes to create the posters. These guys meet at the Weir every Tuesday. Poppy Popstar has her ultimate 70s night at the Weir on Thursdays. Up and coming brilliant singer Daisy, she's playing at the Weir live on the 16th of May. Sarah Rose and her open mic poetry bring some culture to the Weir. The Charleston Teds, they're playing on the 18th of June, also at the Weir, as is Amanda D on the 18th of July. She features Chandwell Silver Band. She's sold out, she's very popular. Made a slightly larger poster as well at A0 size. This is Stephen G. He plays on Sundays at the Weir. The Chandwell advertisers say that Stephen is the funniest night of the week. This text is only 0.09mm tall. It'll never be seen, it won't even be printed. I duplicate and drag the posters into some kind of grid pattern until it looks good. Make sure I put Amanda's sold out signs on top and then the large Stephen G ones over the top again and slightly wonky. To create the frame, I draw a rectangle over the whole thing so I get it to the right size. Duplicating it, I create a copy 1mm taller and 1mm wider. Then I arrange these so we end up with a half millimetre frame all the way around. I find it easier to cut out when I'm following lines, so I add a 0.2mm grey line around the whole thing to help me guide my blade when it comes to cutting it out. This leaves me with a 0.3mm wide frame. This is now all printed out and ready to assemble. 
it's nice to have these little details on the layout. You'll never actually see them. In fact, you've got to look very hard to see the things in the first place, and you certainly can't read the writing that's on them. But I know it's there, and I like that. Most especially, I want to say thank you to Daisy and Poppy, my wonderful nieces, who sent me this this week. It turned up in the post. It's a brilliant Chandwell poster. It has my iron arch and a train on it and everything. You've really captured the spirit of Chandwell. I'm going to put it on the wall behind the fiddle yard, so whenever I look up I can always have a smile. I really hope that the posters that I put under my bridge have really made you smile as well. So looking forward two weeks to my next full length video, I'm going to hopefully show you the completion of the Weir Inn, the scene of all of the entertainment in Chandwell it would seem. Um, I'm, I'm still waiting for my scale glaze windows to go in there, so hopefully they'll have turned up and I'll be able to complete that video to show you how I'm getting on with the Weir pub. So until then, I um, just want to say Happy New Year, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.